Tonight, the NAACP issues a new call to action. We applaud the goals of the new administration to develop sustainable energy sources and to stop global warming. We all have a responsibility to protect the planet for generations to come. And that's why we are recognizing the work of Professor Wangari Mathai and Al Gore. They come from different worlds, Mathai growing up in the forest of Kenya and Gore on a Tennessee farm. But they each acquired a love and respect for nature and a concern for the future of our planet. Gary Mathai became an echo warrior out of necessity after experiencing firsthand the effects of deforestation in her native Kenya. The loss of trees meant a loss of soil, which made it impossible to grow crops. In 1976, Professor Mathai introduced the idea of community-based tree planting, and the Greenbelt Movement was born. The project not only enriched the soil, but enriched the lives of the women involved. The Greenbelt Movement blossomed into a crusade of human rights and democracy in Kenya. Wangari herself was beaten and jailed, but the movement continued and to spread to other countries throughout the continent and around the world. If you're going to shed blood because of our land, we will. We are used to that. Our forefathers shed blood for land. Mimi, Wangari Mutamadai. Wangari was elected to parliament and in 2004, she was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace. While Wangari Mathai was starting to plant trees, Al Gore was starting his political career in the United States Congress. He held the nation's first congressional hearings on climate change and global warming as early as 1978. His book, Earth in the Balance, was a warning about the world's ecological predicament and a prescription for healing it. As vice president, he helped negotiate the Kyoto Climate Agreement, which was ratified by 37 industrialized countries, but never signed by the United States. Since leaving government, Al Gore founded the Alliance for Climate Protection and launched the WE campaign to fight for clean energy. An inconvenient truth helped alert the world about the dangers of global warming and won the Academy Award for Best Documentary. And in 2007, Al Gore received the Nobel Peace Prize for his role in combating global warming. The efforts of these two outstanding leaders, with the cooperation of the new administration, will usher in a new era of environmental concern for our nation and for our world. Um, thank you. Um, I'm proud to introduce a young man who has used his voice and his talents to help bring change to America. Ladies and gentlemen, Image Award winner, Will I Am. Today, I challenge our nation to commit to producing 100% of our electricity from renewable energy and truly clean carbon-free sources within 10 years. out the hole asking all deceivers the things I want to know if we so technological why we still burning oil cause I got a car you plug into the wall that's faster than a GTO we shot for the stars, put rovers on Mars, make planes like UFOs. So while we borrowing money from China to buy oil from the Gulf and destroying the world, every bit that's of that has change. to change. And that's gotta change. We stand up, we stand up, take our plane. If 
we fight in a war on terror? Why ain't we fighting for the environment? We spend a billion dollars on wars and foreign lands, but nothing on education. Nikola Tesla turned the Niagara fall in the energy way back when. And we still burning coal. Oh. You can make electricity with solar, solar and wind. wind. Wangari Mathai is much more than the first African woman to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. She is the embodiment and promise of the global environmental justice movement. And Al Gore has made clear to world leaders and ordinary people that not only is global warming real, but that human actions are at the center of solutions as well as the problem. It is my great honor to present this year's Chairman's Award to these courageous individuals. Professor Wangari Mathai and Mr. Al Gore. Thank you so much. I want to thank Mr. Chairman, Mr. Julian Bond, the President, Mr. Benjamin Giros, and all of you for making this evening such a wonderful and memorable evening. For me, it's a great recognition because I have a history I came into this country first in 1960 as a result of inspiration that was born by President Kennedy. And I'm very much a child of the 60s and the struggles of the 60s. So as I stand here, and especially after the election of President Obama, whom you know have some roots, in Kenya, I feel indeed that I am part of the long journey and the long march and the dream that Martin Luther King bequeathed us. And I hope that we shall continue to walk this route. We have a long way to go, but we have come a long way. Thank you all very much. It's a great honor and privilege to be in the great presence of my friend for many years during our struggle for the environment, the Vice President, Argo.
Thank you, Dr. Mathai. We have worked together in this cause for more than 20 years, and it is a great honor for me to stand on this stage with you. And Chairman Julian Bond, thank you and the NAACP for this tremendous honor. Happy 100th birthday. We feel such pride in what the NAACP has accomplished, and we feel such pride in our country. The climate crisis is a true planetary emergency. And as we have seen, as the scientists predicted that hurricanes like Katrina and Rita would be more likely to get stronger, the victims are more likely to be those with relatively less political, social, and economic power. We have seen this past week in Australia, the scientists predicted that large fires can be more likely, and our hearts are with the victims of those and other tragedies that are unfolding. I'm told there is an African proverb that if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We've got to go far quickly. <laughs> but <laughs> the NAACP has proven to our country and has proven on behalf of our country to the entire world that we can go far. And in solving the climate crisis, we can do it. Yes, we can. We've got everything we need with the possible exception of political will. But as our country proved once again just a few months ago, in the United States of America, political will is a renewable resource. Thank you.